The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. This is Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and my service is the opening call daily newsletter. What we're looking at is the Dow's up 45 of 31,013. This is a really important phase just in terms of chart patterns because I always like to think that the market is just swinging between arch and cup and arch and cup. Uh, and straight lines. Uh, this is the reason why I have this particular pattern that I always talk about. If I can just find it right here, it's not that, it's this. Um, straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation, mixed between one and two and one and three. If it's the one and three, uh, it is the red sharply down, rallies to a peak A or a B, and then fails and takes out the left side low. You can see that the Dow went to an A minus. There it went to an A. It's the same pattern over here. It went to a B and it's pulled back, but now it's holding. So in this particular phase, the question came to me, and I'll be going through it in some questions I had from different charts that we'll be looking at, is when will you see a failure pattern um, when everything looked like it was looking good. In this particular case, you can even take a look at it in terms of the Dow going from 29,653 up to 31,885. I mean, over 2,000 points, a really big move. Then it pulled back. Now it's using time. I have the rule of thumb, 136. And um, I love when you just get a one-bar correction and then you move higher, or one-bar correction, you move lower. Um if it's three, that's still fine. When it gets to more than three and it gets in, getting close to six, it's almost as if you have to reinstitute a buy, a brand new buy signal or a sell signal. It's like a, it's used up too much time, especially if it's pulled back over fifty percent from the bottom to the top. And this is that that's why reason why I say these four sessions that we've just had. This is the fifth one now. Are going to be really important because look how much you have to do to try to get the 31,885 uh, level of six sessions ago, five sessions ago. Um, so within that context, so far this is okay action. It's good action in the Dow. If you look at the S&P, which is uh, now the Dow is up 98. The S&P, where did I put that? And the S&P is finally flipping up. It's up 14, uh, 3846. Um, this is a little bit better action than the Dow because it's nicely above the 14-period moving action, uh, moving average, but the 9 hasn't yet crossed positive. It's really close to it. could by th Thursday or Friday if we don't break down. In fact, we rally sharper. Look at the QQQ. Uh, the QQQ is up $1.32 at 288.26. And um, one of the reasons why for subscribers to Mobile Nicole, we went long yesterday morning, actually, a little bit aggressive because we in the three times long uh, – um, QQQ um, ETF. And what, what we're looking at is it's so close to taking out, which has been in since, oh, way back, the most recent Chapman Wave Inside Track resistance level started at this, not the high that was made at 371.83 back in March, but the high that was made in April the 21st at uh, 347. Eight, eight, seven. That sounds like a dream, right? Well, it's it's held uh, as a resistance all the way through through the rally in June, through the rally um, earlier rally in July, going to the from the 16th of June, uh, high of 267, no, low of 269.28, went to 296.58, got repelled in three bars, couldn't make it, pulls back, and now it's the second bar that's on the inside track repellent zone. I'll get rid of this if this if the uh, queues next week are trading in the 393, 398 area. That'll be fabulous action. So far today, it's good action. And what we're also looking at is within the context of uh, the indices, IWM uh, hasn't been very good. It was actually acting a little bit better in terms of the daily chart, uh, just in patterns. But then it started to fail. Had a good session yesterday. Not a bad session so far today. Down 75 cents at 172.06. Now I need to just spend a little time on this gold. Um, 
down tan. We've been looking at this, and I've been spending a lot of time talking about it. And certainly for my subscribers, I say we're not going long. It's it's uh, uh, this and the GDX for testing Chapman Wave Inside Track Propellant Zone, and now we're way underneath it. And that was at 1805. That was the re um, yeah about 1805, and here we are at 1750. 1754, and that's impacted the weekly chart, which I, the monthly chart, which I had drawn in some time ago. I said there's a really good chance we can make a huge cup formation and then fail either just under, right on, or just above the previous high. I give this a continuous contract, so the price is a, a changing price, but nothing else. The letters, nothing else changes, but 2124.3, so 2143. Sorry. 2124.3 was the high. That's on the continuous contract. That that number can change. Nothing else changes. And then a lower high at 2080, was it? Uh, 2089. Yeah, 2089. There it is in March. So now we're pulling back, and I drew in this candle, this cup formation, and it says somewhere in the uh, 1720s, that's where we should see an attempt at least to stabilize. Now, if you look at this little mini dreaded H pattern, what's the dreaded H pattern? This is the red, where you remember this is the inversion of the dreaded H, right? In this particular case, this is the, the full, the Chapman Wave falling axe formation uh, has been taken out to the downside, inverted falling axe, and turned into the cup formation turned into the arch formation, and we're down. Now, the low that was made back in, I think it was July a year ago, wasn't it? No, August a year ago. A 1693.3, let's call it 1694. A 1694, I think we might stop just before that, have a decent bounce, and then come back and test it. So um, let me put this into context here with the, with the silver, and we don't have any of these positions. Silver. Um, look at that. Silver's come down. It's done the dreaded H pattern way, way underneath the 20 point, about 53 or so. Let me give you the exact price. The 20, 43, low of the 13th of May. To, does a p full peak D. It goes PK, peak B, peak C, and peak D. Remember, I was complaining. I said it's great that it did a D, but the fact is it had a full buy mode, and that's all it could do. That's not very good. And now it's turned around. And you've got a more than one to one to the downside from the, oh, you, you don't, you have it almost exact. Yeah, a little bit more than a one to one to the downside, one of the techniques that we use. And it's now in a leg a G slash C in the weekly chart. And you can see this is way uglier than the uh, than the gold contract. Let's look at uh, uh, high grade copper. High, high grade copper is also pulling back. So all these, this is the reason why the, the market should be buoyant, just loving, ebullient, I should say, ebullient, uh, and looking at uh, this particular phase, and yet it's not, because overall this is still a bear market, and we're looking at really good retracements to the upside, but maybe we're going to be making lower highs and lower lows for a little while longer, but in the meantime, there should be a further accommodation to the upside, because you've got crude oil pulling back, a shot with this crude oil, uh, crude oil, high-grade copper, crude oil, Wood, the ice shares, global forestry, the timber forestry here, down at the lows. This should all be helpful. I'll be back in a moment. Dallas down to five, this will be down eight. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. VistaGold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. VistaGold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. VistaGold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. VistaGold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back, and I think I'd like right away to go to our first caller. Is that Fish in Riverview, Florida? Yes, hey, Basil. Hi, how are you doing? Good, yourself? I listen to I'm you every well, day thank you. and uh, appreciate your work. Well, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Hey, um, I hope I can explain this properly. Um, my question is, is it possible to, or in, is there any effective way to, say, use the triples? Like, suppose I'm using the TQQQ and the SQQQ. Yes. Is there any way to, like, pick some type of key inflection point and buy both with a 1% stop and have that be effective or do you pretty much always have to have a bias? So, uh, so would you have a stop on any of those positions? That's the question. Yes, it would be like a 1% or 2% stop on both of them and you'd buy them at the same time. I mean, is that is there any way to do that at certain key so, points or is it all you're always going to get bit? trying something so, like that. No, that can work. There's a very specific way that I've actually, once in a, once in a while, I've attempted something like that. And it can work, but uh, yeah, this is you know, a long time ago. Now I must be talking 15 years. It could even be more than 15 years. And once in at, at, the, at the Boston Investors uh, uh, a group that uh, I don't remember what the name was at the time, I, I met a guy, and he uh, he was an unusual guy. He had made money somewhere. I can't remember what it was. I think he made a hundred thousand, just like that. I, I I can't remember if it was. He, he, I think he he I think he won it through, or, or, or he gained it through the market, and then he had. No, I can't remember what it was. Whatever it is, he had a hundred grand, and he sat there and he said, "You know what I do sometimes? I take the futures." And I just, I close my eyes and I just hit everywhere. I hit buy, sell, buy, buy sell, buy, <laughs> sell, just all over the show. I mean, they could be 40 or 50, 100 points apart. In those days, that was a massive number. And he said, by the, by the end of the day, I've made money. I, I said, what? He said, yeah, because it just moves around. It goes up and down and up and down. And uh, I, I can't remember how he put it. So 
there are so many different ways in the market. My thinking was that that should surely cost you a bundle. But anyway, he said he made money. And I will always remember that I've never tried anything like that. But it was just fascinating. I don't know if that defies the laws or that is exactly the law of, of volatility, but it was one of the ways. So I'm just going to suggest well, to you that can, if you have a stock. Can I add one more thing in here, Basil? Yes. To be specific to your methodology, yeah. my thinking is a dreaded H. Um, you know, is, is there, could you possibly use the dre uh, dreaded H and it's either going to fail or succeed and going to go significant, based on that, going to go significantly one way or the other. So the way I'm thinking about this, and actually what you've discussed, I haven't, dis I haven't thought of it uh, always in terms of the triples, just in terms of trading. If you put in a, a one and a half or two percent uh, risk, <sighs> You're probably going to get stopped out quite quickly. Yeah. I, I, I would say yeah. a 3%, there's a greater chance. Why? Because okay. in this environment, the moves have been almost 6 to 8% or even more sometimes. Uh, and therefore, you take your loss, your 3% loss, and then the other adds the 3% to it. So in the end, hopefully... It is more than a 6% gain and it becomes 7 or 8% and all of a sudden you're in the money. I think that that would work if you are strategic. In other words, right here at the QQQ hitting the resistance today of my trend line, uh, the high today is 288.74. That's probably where it would work because the it's – it's showing the pattern that the dreaded H that was perfect in the peak B minus in the QQQ on the 2nd of June. Uh, look how it plummeted. I mean, if you were long and you were short the, the triples, so at 340, let's just say you got in at 340. You were perfect. You just got in just off the top, but you actually had both positions. That means that when it started coming down, it actually went to 269.28 on the 16th. That... That's a fantastic gain. That is that is really fabulous. So my my thinking here, yeah, just in terms of your question, five, I think it was. Uh, am I hearing something else going on? So I'm sorry. I wanted to bring up my screen, but I had to mute it. Oh, so I wanted okay. To see what, I wanted to look at Tiger TV, but I needed to mute it. Okay. So what I was saying that right at that high that was made at two ninety six fifty eight within that per parameter, what would have happened is in this one. You would have got more than your 3%. You would have lost 3%, but you would have made a lot more going from 296, let's say, down to the most recent low of uh, 275. That's 20 points. I mean, that is, that's, uh, that's uh, what is that? That's 8% 8, that's 8 So, yes, I think it can work, but you have to be extremely uh, meth methodical and you have mm -hmm. to be really strict with your um, bias, in other words, the stop, you might say, you know what, we're at 296. I think we might, if we break out, that's fantastic. But if we pull back, uh, it could be a, you know, it could be sharp because it's been repelled from this level so many times before. And therefore, yeah. you might say, I'm going to have a tighter stop on my short than I have on my long. That's one of the you know, different ways, but you have still very strict, maybe 2 to 3%, maybe 1.5%. But I would even experiment a little bit in this particular market right now because the volatility is so, I mean, 20 points on the S&P, the E-minis, is like whew, the blink of an eye, Boop, just 20 points. Right. So I, th I, think, I think what that you're saying a, is if I suppose I was using triples, and I only had a 1% or 2% stop, I could probably get stopped out on both of them and lose on both you, of them. So absolutely. I'm trying to work out would I use a, use a triple or a double or a single and how much the stop would be. So, so let me do this because I have the same thing that's going on for years now where I use the nine-period exponential moving average. As you know, it goes green. It's still pink in the Dow daily. But if I had to go to the E-mini right now, let me just go to the E-mini right now. Let me show you something. There was a fantastic, I, I, I'm a little embarrassed because I didn't pick it up. 
I, I was I was just about to hit the button. And I was doing my newsletter at the time, and I thought, don't 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 lose your focus on your newsletter. And I was going to hit the button right here as it turned green. The nine period moving in the one minute e mini at about uh, eight nineteen at thirty eight uh, twenty one. And I'd already drawn in this beautiful bowl formation. I had done all my work, and I said, oh, it's impossible. Are you telling me that the way I've drawn this says that it could go to the high of 633 uh, this morning at uh, 3837? That's impossible. But look what happened. It went above that. It went to 38. 30, it went right there, 3837, in exactly the time frame. I just, I'd drawn it perfectly. I never got in. But... Uh, what I wanted to point out is, look, the nine period moving average has wiggled between green and pink and green and pink. <clears throat> That's where I would have lost money if I was buying the pink and I was shorting yeah. the pink and buying the green, even if I had a two or three point stop. I, I think it's worth talking about it. Can you hold on? Yes, thank you. Okay, let's continue. We've got fish in Florida and we're looking at the queues. We'll be back and we just discussed the email. We'll be back in a moment. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, folks, we're back and we're on with fish from uh, Florida. We're looking at we're looking at the cues, but basically we've been discussing the trading pattern that says if you were to buy three times long or three times short one of the one of the ETFs, um, how could you put in a stop? On both of them hoping that one is going to just break to the upside in such a fashion that it more than makes up for the loss that you're going to but you do have to put in a stop and what I want to discuss exactly. is in the relationship uh, if you had say in in the work that I'm showing right now let me just get rid of the fib here for the moment okay you can see there's a beautiful pattern and then it went to uh, the e-mini went to uh, double top let me do this again i like to put in the vertical uh, test right there 
and that was at about 9.33. It makes the high around about 38, I think it was 38.52. And then it pulls back, makes a beautiful cup formation, and does a retest and fails at the retest at, uh, at 10.05, 10.03. And then what happens? Just underneath. So that's a great peak B and becomes a peak B minus. It makes a lower low. And then it goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. And now we're at a peak E, but a very quick A, B, C, D, E. And that always says, watch out, you can pull back. doesn't say major pullback. It says, watch out, you can pull back because you got to a a very weak buy mode that went to an E way under the previous high. And that's the way I like to look at it. So that says the 200 period moving you know, average of 38, 31, that's going to be key support. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is I've been experimenting with this. I, I'm about in the next two weeks or so, I'm about to actually put it into practice. What happens if you buy certain moving averages? Everybody has their favorite moving averages. It doesn't really matter. Just say, um, in this case, I'm using the nine period exponential moving average. When it turns green, you buy. When it turns red or pink, in this case, you sell and you just do that. You would have been, you had a fantastic gain, but you probably would have given back much of that gain by buying the high and selling the low in this whippy sideways action, unless you recognize the double, uh, the cap formation test of the left side high to the right side high, which is very weak, and that it should pull back. So if you can mix it in with some other techniques, for instance, I, I, I refrain from just buying, saying, buying, selling, because it even here, it went just for two bars, it went pink. I would have shorted, I would have bought it. So that the premium I would have lost, I usually make a real tight stop. Let's just say it's two points. Um, I would have so it would cost me two, four, six, eight, and then actually by the time you implement it, because you 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 could do it automatically, but but while you're watching, you could actually lose another point, even two. So I could have lost all the gains that I made by having this beautiful technique because I did not recognize that a sideways pattern can last a lot longer than your patience or your money. And then it suddenly spiked at that high. So I'm going to just, I want to show this to point out to you that every technique you have, unless it is accompanied by something else which in the main must work. In other words, it's not going to work every time. There's no technique that works every single time. I like to think the Chapman wave is the waveform that never sleeps. But in fact, um, it doesn't mean to say that you get everything right. And I just wanted to point out that the technique is something that you might have to experiment. Now, I, do you have, are you able to paper trade? In other words, have, have a little experiment yeah. going on? So why I don't, don't you right do right now, but uh, I, I just have been thinking about this for a long time and wanted to get yeah. your thoughts I, on I it. love the idea, but I love I the idea do this, only. But I, I would like to if it would work. Okay, so we don't, every market condition is different. So it could have worked fantastically. We were having those 90 to 100 point E-mini moves uh, over the past couple of weeks. Maybe now it slows down just a little bit. So this might be the wrong environment to test it okay. for success, but the perfect environment to, to test it for failure. So I'm going to suggest start a start a, uh, a paper account and use this exact technique. Write down what you're doing, and in the beginning, be strict about something, and then you can loosen it up because you're okay. going to find out that such and such works, and maybe. Uh, the risk tolerance that you would have, even though it's paper, is just way more, and you're going to have to narrow some of the thing. Now, just be prepared that some of the, the patterns that we have, the big spikes up and down have often had a little jiggle beforehand. It's almost like, right. yeah, here's a perfect example. This morning, there was, um, it doesn't look like anything right now, but I'm moving this across, and I'm going to expand it right there. There was a beautiful entry point at the low, especially if you use volume, etc. at 8.05 this morning at 38.14.75 in the E-mini. And then what does it do? It bounces quite nicely to 38.18, but it comes back and it retests, mm -hmm. and it retests just above the left side low. So if you wanted to make sure you didn't lose anything, so you put in a stop not below your entry point because you raised it after it was rallying, you would have got stopped out, and then from 38.16, it runs all the way with, with hardly any break to 38 um, to the 38.30s. So that's what I'm saying, that you want to learn 
the pattern so that you can also use the pattern as you originally in your first statement that you use some of the Chapman methodology. So you want to use that as well. So start off with something, add something else, and keep in touch with me. You can either e email me at basilchapman at tfnm.com. Just let me know. Even send a chart to say this is what I've been looking at, um, and we can see how that works. But it's it's a great idea. But do pre be prepared that there are times where you're going to get whipsawed. And then right. there are times you're going to just make a huge amount of money. And then the next five trades could be whipsawed again. Um, so let me know. But I like the idea. And you just have to refine a little bit more. But I, I like that. And the fact that you said three times long, it just means that you're trying to get as much as possible in the shortest time frame. But it also means you're going to lose it as much as possible in the short time frame. So it doesn't right. have to be. Three, three times. You could, you could even do it on a one-to-one. -one. You know, you could even go to the S and P, uh, S, S Spy and the S H, or the Dow, D I A, and the Dog, um, whatever it is, or the Qs. You could, whatever it is, be very consistent and write down what you're doing. All right. Thanks a lot, bud. I appreciate it. Appreciate your show, and like I said, listen every day, and I uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah, I know we've got a great team here. We all love it to, yeah, together. And thank you very much, Fish. Thank you. Thank you. So, folks, let me just do this. I don't want to run out of time because someone sent something in quite early. Uh, I will do the dollar. There was a question about the rising wedge formation. I'll get to that, but let me just do this. First of all, the question came in. Can you look at overstock today? I think it is interesting play in our economic environment. Our recession may even benefit it uh, by selling recession goods. Value play down uh, close to 70%. Make it a great day. Yeah, thank you. So let's just look at Overstock OSTK. I don't know if I've updated it. I, uh, have I? Oh, I wrote it and typed in the wrong place. There it is. I love the thinking. I, I, that kind of thinking, I think, is that's very important in this environment to be thinking a little bit out of the box and saying, hey, um, what about. Uh, there was another one. Uh, what was it? What, uh, L L L. Let me just see if I. I don't want to mess things up yet. L L L or L L. Yeah, flooring holdings. Okay, L L. The flooring holdings. They changed their name. That's also a company that's also where they sell, um, you know, goods uh, very inexpensively. Good, good stuff, but inexpensively. So let's go to Overstock. So Overstock right now had an all-time high. And a, a 128.50 back in August of 2020. And then it made a very, almost like gold. It made this beautiful U shaped pattern. I forgot I'd drawn this in and I didn't redraw it. That's it no. So, and then it went and it failed uh, below the previous high. And then it took out that left side low that was in the 47 area, 40, sorry, 43 area. And now it's trading 2676. So we've got a break coming up. I'd like to spend, this is the thinking that says, my thinking might be correct, but is the stock following my thinking? So let's do that. Overstock, OSTK, we'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, we're back. So uh, for Paul, we're looking at OSTK, the Silver Stock, and Overstock Inc. Uh, is trading right now down $1.09 at $26.97. That's a real shame. If today uh, it was up above yesterday's high with a really nice candle, two days of good candles from the double bottom, 24.82 was the low back in uh, the 24th of May. It rallied to peak ABC, pulls back. And I, tr I drew in a left side, right side price time match from this almost doji candle type on the 13th of June. Then it had a sudden spike to a peak D right at the uh, 50 period exponential moving average. And I need that 50, never had even cared about it. But all of a sudden, when you look at the way it reversed, the price reversed from the February uh, 22, uh, 22nd uh, low, 35.67, all the way to Wow, this is, that's the move you wanted to see right now to 50, uh, 57, no more, it went to 59.46 on the 1st of May. Uh, then all of a sudden, so how could that be the second? Am I reading that correctly? Oh, oh, March, sorry, the 1st of March. So May? Well, that's too long. Anyway, and then it fell to the peak A and it kept coming down slowly, but it, it took out the 35.67 low. And then it went to an even lower doji candle, and it couldn't rally sharper than a peak A minus. Look at the 24.82 low of the 24th of May. And then that sudden spike to a peak D at the 50 period moving average, which has proven before to be many times a, a resistance level, what it was again. And then it made a lower low, 24.69. But within two days, it, uh, sessions, it cl uh, closed nicely above 24.82. So today is so far very disappointing. Because if today there was a move into the 2750 area, and yesterday it could have done it because yesterday the high was 2616. So you could have had a point up instead of a point down. I would have said, you know what? That is a nice sign. So that's what I was saying. The thinking and the application or the thinking and the chart formation, they have to be in sync. So I think you, I'm with you. I believe that uh, in this period, all these different discounted areas are going to see something that uh, should benefit them. Why hasn't it done that now? I suspect because the selling pressure has been so intense, it hasn't found favor amongst fund managers. And that's really what you're going to need. So it hasn't done that. And all I'm going to say is, you know, 2469, if it goes under 2469, it's probably going to go a little bit lower before it again tries to, to rally. The MACD is good enough that it should have rallied, but it hasn't. Just classic went from single digits to 17%. Should rally better than this. It hasn't. The day is young. I'm going to suggest something, and I don't know if you actually have this in your portfolio yet. I am going to suggest the thinking is right. The price isn't valuing your thinking. But the pattern says, 
if by Friday, today's low is already 2631. If it doesn't take out 26 low today, but in fact rallies nicely off the low, I'm going to suggest just as a starter position, start your engines at 2719 right now. Yes, but you have to treat it two ways. You have to treat it near term with stops, treat it with respect because it hasn't shown any real positive signs. So treat it with respect. The fact that you are waiting for it to do what you want is the thing. But the other is that if I look at the weekly chart, if at any, it's making this rectangle formation, and it says at any point, if o overstock, OSDK, can close, I can't say just above, I have to say decisively above the high of 34.07, that was the high of the 1st of July, uh, of July, that was last week, but if it closes above that 14 period moving average, it's tried since it broke down on the, Third of the week of the third of December 2021, a high of 93.80 and a low of 79. Since it broke under that uh, 14 period moving average, and then the very next week it went pink negative. Once it tried to break above and it hasn't, but it's touched it many times. 14. This is the first time that it's touched touched the 14 period that was last week. And you want to see not a touch. You want to see a close by next week into the. 36 area. Wow, seven more than seven points, nine points. That's a big ask. So I think it's going to be a slow process. So I'm saying to you, on the one hand, I'd have a fairly tight stop. If I'd get in at 27.17, I probably would say I need a dollar at least. So that's like four, uh, yeah, it's almost, uh, it's not five percent, about four percent risk at the starting point. I would then add to it, if you survive any stop, and it actually, even today, if it closes towards the high of the day and tomorrow it's even even able to hit 28.96, that would be the start that you're looking for. Number one, I think we're in the same category here of thinking that this is a stock that should be helped by the recession. Uh, we're talking about recession. It's not official yet. We know that in most sectors have been in a recession. A couple have not. That's number one. And number two, is that it's a slow process that if it holds the whole 24 area and starts to move into the 25, then 26, you could see another big arch formation and have a fabulous rally from the 20, uh, from the 2469 low towards the 50 period moving average at 31. And as a trade, four points would be fantastic in this particular issue, but you have to go step by step. It has shown no signs yet that it wants to break significantly into the 36s, which is what it needs to say, wow, overstock is finally finding a, a home. I hope that helps you. Okay, next question I had was, in the dollar, there's a rising wedge formation. I, I usually talk about these in a very specific way, um, but this is not really a rising wedge because it broke. Yesterday it broke, and today it went even higher above the trend line. So that says it's not a pure rising wedge because we've already broken the resistance. In other words, if I had a Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, this is way above it. Actually, he's now treating that as, as a support level. And then the rising trend line is way down at 104.80, I think, maybe 104. Yeah, 104.80. Um, and here you are at 107.22. I have to then say, so the question is, what would I be looking at if I was looking at a rising wedge formation? I always think the rising wedge reminds me of the Statue of Liberty. I was actually driving by the Statue of Liberty on Saturday. Um, and uh, in fact, I was very close to it now that I think I was in Red Hook. Um, and uh, it was just beautiful to see. And uh, I always think of the, 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 the rising wedge as, as the Statue of Liberty. I don't know why I've got this image. Remember, I come to, to technical analysis via the visuals. It's like they're holding a candle. And my thinking is that it, the story in, in most technical books says, oh, oh, be careful because they're going to have a very sharp pullback. But a really sharp pullback means it has to go underneath the whole 104's support. And just at the moment, I don't see that. In fact, I think it's raised the support to the 105.79 breakout level in the cup formation. So this is not really a pure uh, uh, play on that rising wedge. Now, if you talk, remember the beautiful cup formation I showed you in the E-mini 
and I didn't anticipate that in such a short while it would make the left side, right side price time match. Remember, this is your plumb line right here, right here, and this is your left side, the left side, LS, oops, up a bit. The left side, the right side, price time match, and it went almost to the exact bar after going from 2020 in March at 102.99 all the way down to 89. Look at that. It just took one more extra and it broke that level. I'll be back in a minute. Dow's down 49, SP's down 5. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So those of you who will be watching me, look at this. This is from the, the E-mini at 10.15 at the low of uh, 3822.00, round number high. Went quickly to a peak A, B, C, D, E, and even an F. And look where it turned to green above the 200 period moving average and the F. And then look, the pattern, the dreaded H. There's arch formation. We've taken it. But this time, it's held above the left side high, uh, left side low. It's at 3829.25. So this is, where, this is where you watch to see, does this H become an M pattern? But look how you could have got whipped if you went long and shown long based on this particular line moving over the 14. That's why I say you need other techniques as well. So that's number one. Number two is, uh, just real quickly, so thank you. The den is such a fantastic medium. Um, uh, s and says, Basil, this might go along with the OSDK. The, this is overstock theme. A glut of goods at Target. Walmart is a boon for liquidators. Yeah, and that's what we're thinking. But we might find, Paul, that there's actually a glut of the overstock. That's the thing. You know, our thinking and price, I want you to do it with the technicals. 
And those are the parameters. I'm sticking with those parameters. If they are met and it starts to move higher, that means it's finally in play. And look at the dollars, the leg D above this left side, right side price time match. Uh, so that's it. I'm going to do this now before we, we wrap up for the day. Check out my opening call. Quick question, uh, question answer. What, what did you do with your STKL? STKL is uh, STKL is um, Sun Opta Inc. We got in yesterday for a quick trade. Uh, we, it went from our level of 817, skyrocketed today. It went to 90. Uh, um, the high was 896, but pre-market it went to 902. We took off two little bits. Uh, we've had a fantastic, what, a 6 and 11% gain. And now we're letting it ride. We'll see this is leg E. It could pull back even sharper. That's why we treat it as a streamer one-day trade and see if we can stay in for longer. That worked out, but it worked out fabulously in the shorter term. Let's see if we can hold it. Have a wonderful session if the, by the end of the day the Dow is able to get we got a plus 40, plus 50 after about 2 o'clock. That's going to be good for the close. And if it's minus 40, it's stuck here for another day. So.